Who it's probably the players. Probably. Yeah. But hey, let, let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's go ahead and talk about on. that. So the NFL PA and the NFL, of course, been kind of going back and forth. This stuff does not look good to anybody when you're discussing whether it's money or any of this stuff. You, you got to figure out a way to get out there and play, right? When there are millions of Americans that are without jobs, without whatever else, and it's, I mean, we're talking millionaires against billionaires again. You got to find a way to get on the field, and I think that they will. I, I like what the players have done so far, but what we're going to talk about today to start us off with is the NFL altering their initial preseason proposal to the NFLPA. They initially said they wanted two games. The NFLPA came back and said, eh, screw that, zero preseason zero games. games. And now the league has come back and said that they, okay, fine, we'll just do one. We're and like, I, we want one game. And I can understand where, I understood where they were coming from with, with two because you want everybody to have one home, one away. You want the walkthrough. You want all of that to see how every stadium is going to be. I understand it. Doing one, only half of the league is really going to figure out how their stadium is going to operate in a situation like this. Um, tell me, tell me your thoughts here. I mean, they're we've we've had players coming out. I don't understand the fight and, with. I don't understand the fight with with the preseason. Okay, like I, I listened to Clay Travis today um, go on his podcast. He made the first clean, good argument that I've heard somebody make in a long time about about preseason and the fact that you know college sports don't have a preseason you know they just start up and a lot of times you have incoming freshmen coming in and we've gotten accustomed to um big time games week one but before the last five six years it's been a whole lot of beat the hell out of nobodies and yeah. that's kind of been a preseason but we don't have that anymore a lot of big boy players come in. They come in as true freshmen. They have far less time with the team than than any of these professionals have. And uh, and they have to be ready to play week one with no preseason. So I get that. If I'm a coach trying to cut down a hundred and something man roster down to, you know, 65, 56, get it, get it all the way cut down. I, I want more opportunities than just practice to figure that out, especially considering they are cutting back on padded practices. Yeah. I just don't know what these guys are capable of doing. Yeah, that's that's the scary thing is, I mean, you, you got to have, it, it's not just the walkthroughs, right? It, you got to have some kind of live reps at some point before you get into this. Because even the difference between preseason and a real live, you know, regular season Well, here's, game here's the difference. He massive. compared it to college football, and that's where he's wrong. College football gets to go live in practice all day, every day with – no, because they don't have a players union. Yeah. They don't have a collective bargaining agreement and they go live every day in practice. And so when they start week one, those kids are in as close to game shape as you can be. And in the NFL, they're as far from it as you can be because they've been playing touch hands in shorts and t-shirts for the majority of the summer and the off season. And, and I, I think I'm good with getting rid of preseason. You got to give coaches more practice, more, more padded practices to go live. That that's the only compromise I'd be willing to give. The problem is, is the coaches are the only people not at the collective bargaining agreement table. You got the owners who just want the revenue. You got the players that want as little practice and work as possible for the most amount of money, and the people that actually. Ha and here's the thing: coaches are going to lose their job because. They cut somebody that somebody was probably a really good player and somebody gets hurt on another team. They get picked up and we see why the hell did you let that guy go? Well, shit, I didn't have one chance to practice with him. Yeah, I never actually saw him in live practice. I never saw him. I saw him one or two snaps, one or two snaps. And if he stumbles out of the block and, 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 he, and he just one, one hair off – on his whatever he's doing, route, procedure, coverage, whatever, block, then he's going to get cut because we don't know anything about him. Yeah, we haven't gotten a chance to see live reps. Like and you're going to see coaches get fired, and then you're going to see coaches that don't deserve it and GMs that don't deserve it get extensions because they found these guys and they didn't find anybody. Yeah. They just got lucky. Uh, Damian Estrada says one preseason game is stupid. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. I understand the live reps. Like it, what's the difference between one and two? Just, yeah, what just what's the difference between one and two? And and really, 
You need two so that everybody has a home and away. And if you're not going to have yeah. two, just do none. Like, it doesn't matter. Uh, hold on, but let me uh, – let's see. Joseph Gomez said, would they want to allow significantly more players in reserves in case the virus spikes? So if they allowed that, I could see you because uh, you're rolling with what you got. Well, that is one of the things that they have discussed today. Um, let me go on and, and say this. Dan Graziano said the NFL and the NFLPA have agreed on testing protocols. They will start with daily testing for the first two weeks and then go to every other day if the positive test rate falls below 5%. If it doesn't, they will continue testing daily. That's one of many things. Adam Schefter retweeted that and said, text just now from a league source, getting closer on most, if not all, issues. So that's a step in the right direction. But one of the things that they were discussing, they are going to expand the practice roster size. Now, the difference there is that anybody can pick from anybody's practice roster. That's like what you I was just about to say. About. The practice roster doesn't protect any players from getting got by any people. It just means they have to clear waivers. Or not, not protect the player, but protect the team. Protect Basically. the team, yeah, that's what I meant. It, yeah. doesn't, well, it doesn't protect the player, that's what I was trying to say, on a team. So yeah. if you're a coach, you can't just stash somebody on the practice squad. Is that how it works? Any, any of the other 31 teams can go snap that fool right off your practice squad. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, this is going to be crazy. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see what's going to happen, but I, I wish they would expand the roster. Yes. That would make me feel better. Expanding the practice roster does n- I mean, it literally does nothing. I, I wish that, I wish that we could get more details from these meetings, from these discussions. Uh, it got a little heated over the weekend. Obviously several, several high profile players came out with their, Hashtag we want to play the stuff that we talked about on Friday's show with TJ Reeves that that JJ Watt was talking about uh, all of them talking about wanting to make sure that they're protected and all that and and really it's only NFL I mean they they should have had all this stuff kind of locked up and but it seems that they are getting there so yeah it seems like they were able to put it together pretty quickly I I just don't understand why they wait to the last minute I don't know if they think that it gives them extra bargaining power or whatever just put a damn plan together this is not that hard. Um, give them, give them something, work with them to see what they want as a plan and then see how much it costs. I'm sure it's just a cheap thing. It probably, you know, they want to test once a week or every four days because the tests are expensive and the players are like, no, no, it's a, it's a hundred billion dollar organization. We're, we're not testing once a week. Yeah. We're testing every day. We're going to make sure that we are safe and that our families are safe. And I, and I uh, totally get, and I'll tell you this, if it falls to, you get an NBA situation where, you get to nothing and almost nobody. You go to every other day, and then at some point in time, you go to every four days, and everything. Then, then we're okay at once a week. Hey, Joseph said uh, Terrell Owens and Chad Johnson showing up on somebody's practice squad. He said, I can see Jay Cutler getting paid for staying at his house. Amazing. It, I don't think that's how that's going to work. Like, it, that, that's not enough money for those guys to come out. 